But when it comes to especially, you know, uh, folks of color, one of the things I'm hoping and part of the reason for doing this now is I want people, you know, black, brown, you know, uh, to know that there is opportunity off the field. Welcome to Hockey Culture, everyone. I'm Anson Carter. This is the place where we try to change the culture of hockey one interview at a time. We have a very special guest joining us today, Terry Smith, the president of Terry Smith Creations, and also the man that designed the San Jose Sharks logo. Terry, welcome. Hey, great to be here. Nice to see you again. Terry, so what's the reaction been like when you walk into a room and they're expecting to meet the person that designed the San Jose Sharks logo and a black man walks into the room? Do you get people double taking sometimes when that happens? Uh, not, not sometimes. All the time. Uh, You know, there aren't too many people in sports who do what I do, Mm -hmm. uh, especially people of color. Um, So, you know, no matter what I'm working on, uh, you know, when I've been involved in things, um, you know, people are always kind of a little surprised, you know, when I walk in because it's just not something they expect. Um, They expect to see the athletes on the ice um, or on the field, on the court. Um, you know, but I do my, my business obviously off, off the field of play. And so it is, you know, a little different for folks to kind of go, okay, it's not what they expect. <laughs> well, you played basketball at Stanford. You never really followed hockey. What was the feeling like when you were approached to design the San Jose Sharks logo? And I assume, correct me if I'm wrong, that you had n- no idea what hockey was all about. Well, I, I, I did a little bit. So I grew up in, uh, in L.A., and as you know, there, there, you know, I don't think there was a team west of the Mississippi, but LA Kings were there, you know. So I had been to a, a hockey games before. I had watched hockey on television. But to your point, you know, growing up as a basketball player, playing football, basketball, baseball, you know, American sports for you know for the U.S. I didn't grow up on the ice, so I didn't have a feel for the game. Um, a lot of times when I'm working on projects or designing, you kind of have a feel for what you're doing. Um, you know, and I like to design things that, you know, athletes want to wear, you know, the sharks logo, it's got movement in it, you know, having the shark diving through the triangle, the, the hockey stick being broken out. There's just more, um, there's more, more emotion to what we do. And so when it comes to actually, you know, again, having experienced a sport, I think that's where I was a little kind of apprehensive about, okay, what should I do here? Um, and I knew that it couldn't be traditional whatever I was doing needed to be something different. Uh, you know, it was very influenced by California, you know, surfing, um, you know, the Gen X crowd at that time, you know, didn't quite exist, but skateboarding, surfing, you know, I wanted to create something that I thought uh, people on the West Coast and in particular in California, you know, could kind of relate to. So that's kind of how we went down that path. But uh, you are correct in the sense that, uh, you know, hockey for me was new because I hadn't played it. I'd watched it, but I hadn't played it. And that makes a big difference to me. Did that get in the creative juices going for you? The <laughs> fact that you weren't a fan of the game. So are you able to think outside the box when it came to your design for the logo? Oh, uh, without question. You know, again, with the other sports, you know, I, you know, you know, the, I knew the athletes by name. Uh, in certain cases, I knew some of the athletes, you know, whether they're in the NBA or the NFL, I, I felt more of a, a personal connection to what was happening there. Um, but I didn't know any hockey players. I didn't grow up with any hockey players. Um, and, you know, from a just novice standpoint, you know, how many hockey players at that time, you know, were, were going to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated or we're gonna, you're going to read articles about. Um, and so for me, it was like, okay, I need to understand enough. But I knew that my primary uh, goal uh, was to create something that would attract attention. Because let's face it, we had to, you know, hockey was a sport, no TV contract. You had to put butts in the seat. So how do you get the word out there? Uh, and, and that mark helped do that. Um, I thought it would work in California and on the West Coast. I had no idea it would have the impact it did, you know, almost worldwide. Well, I tried my best to rock some teal. As the closest I could get to teal is my blue. <laughs> Not many teams, or no teams, I should say, there weren't any teams wearing teal at all as part of their primary colors. Uh, what went in the thought process? Is that all because of the California and the water? Like, take me behind that. And there was a lot of pushback with the league when it came to the design 
because I remember we had these conversations before about the stick being broken. That was groundbreaking also. We've never seen stuff like that in, when it came to design for logos also. Yeah, I mean, what we did was, it was in no sense traditional. <clears throat> and so, yeah, it did ruffle a lot of feathers. We were doing something that was different. Um, hockey traditionalists did not like it. Um, and so there was a lot of pushback. And so I give the Sharks organization at the time and the people running the organization a lot of credit for, you know, um, going with something that was different. But I think they also knew that, you know, we had to be, they had to be a little bit different in terms of their approach to it. <clears throat> when it came to the color teal, the, uh, the thought press, my original color scheme I was looking for was going to be more of, if you think about a shark, you think about maybe blood in the water. <laughs> so the idea of a blood red. So it, the colors are all the same, but re replace the teal with, with, a, with a nice dark red. And that was kind of where I was originally leaning. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the principals uh, at that time with the Sharks, you know, was a big kind of Miami Dolphins fan. <clears throat> and back in the 70s, you know, Miami had that kind of, you know, they were kind of a aqua and, and orange color. Um, and at the time we were doing that, the, the Dolphins had switched more to a, it was more of a, a green color than it was a teal. So nobody was really using that color. But the idea of teal is, yeah, we looked at what colors were going to work, what was going to be a little fresher in the marketplace. And again, looking at our California audience, uh, and, it, and it seemed to work. Those first years in terms of the merchandise, you saw all different, <laughs> all different shades of teal and all kinds of stuff as manufacturers were scrambling. And then as the logo became popular, now they had to produce more stuff and they just didn't have it. So it was an interesting problem to have. But uh, yeah, teal ended up, you know, being a color that worked. And if you think about hockey and, and that color, as we talk about, you know, trying to design things that the players will wear. So, you know, that color, did you consider it too feminine, you know, to be on the ice? Um, and so there's all those kind of things that come into play. But, you know, players at that time, it was different. They liked the main logo and so i think you know the teal kind of grew on them as well and you know now it's something that uh, kind of is a matter of pride for the team and the players we've talked a lot about design um bringing out different emotions in people and i think with the sharks logo i think about speed and power like you just talked about but i also think about butting through that stick that big chomp that's a big part of the logo why do you think there was pushback as to they weren't the league didn't want you to have the shark actually butting through the logo at the time well, I think it, you know, it, it was a tool of, of, you know, you being an ex, uh, a player, you'll know, I mean, that's the tool of your trade. And so here I am, you know, it's like taking a baseball player's bat and, you know, and your logo has a broken bat, um, you know, or a basketball player has a flat ball or a football player has a flat football. Um, so it was, it was just something that uh, they had to think about and, and they weren't quite sure what reaction would be. Do you ever think about, how crazy it's been that you designed this jersey that was wildly successful across the world globally, not just your local market, which you designed it for, and the league had to change its business model <laughs> just to really deal with the increase in revenue just based on this jersey design that you came up with? Yeah, you know, I think, and as you know, at that time, I mean, sports were growing, they were changing. Um, you know, the NHL was looking at what some of the other leagues were doing when it came to uh, how they were run. Um, as the owners became more of a collective group, you know, and you had players unions, and now you had the owners and, you know, the other, uh, I think if you looked at it, you know, like the NFL model at the time, I mean, all those owners were sharing in that television money. It wasn't just your local market. So I think it was going to end up that way anyway. Um, I think we just sped it up a little bit. Um, the Sharks logo at the time, the team hadn't played yet. Uh, yet the merchandise, I believe at the time, was second only to the Chicago Bulls in terms of, you know, uh, global sales. Wow. So what that meant was <clears throat> there's a lot of money coming in. And as you know, from an owner's perspective, the other owners are looking at this and you know, going, hmm, right? The Sharks were also, you know, their, their leadership group, you know, they were trying different things. They're out on the West Coast. So they were trying to make a lot of deals, you know, kind of on their own. Um, and when it came to television, <clears throat> when it came to radio, when it came to entertainment, 
And let's face it, that's where things were headed. Um, the Sharks were very innovative in those areas. And they were going to do things that other teams in the league wasn't going to be a part of financially. Things have come a long ways in the National Hockey League. Think about the Sharks days and think about the Vegas Golden Knights, how innovative they are, how creative they are. The San Jose Sharks were the Vegas Golden Knights before the Knights came into town. <laughs> I mean, that's a good way to look at it. And I, I think about a, a guy like Mohamed Fofana, who designed those like Juneteenth shirts for the San Jose Sharks. And he put his own spin on the Black History Month jerseys using red, yellow, and green, not using any teal at all. But he was inspired by Terry Smith yourself. You want to pay yeah. homage to a person like yourself. Yeah. How does that make you feel when someone out there in San Jose that works for the squad uh, wants to make sure that he's given this opportunity to design these, these jerseys, but he wants to show the proper respect by paying homage to someone like yourself that designed the original Sharks logo? It's always flattering. Um, you know, when uh, you know that you've had an influence on what people are doing, um, and it was one of those things when I was growing up, you know, I saw the athletes on the field. Um, that's what I wanted to be. Um, but as I've done more artwork and, you know, over the years, um, as I was saying before, I, I was never one that was in front of the camera, all my stuff, nobody knew who I was or what I was. Um, so as I've come forward a little bit more, put my face out there a little bit more, um, the, you find there are a lot of people who are surprised. But more importantly, um, I get a lot of uh, mail, emails, things like that of, um, you know, not just artists of color, but artists in general who um, realize that there's, an there's, there's more opportunities there. You know, uh, being an artist is very similar to, you know, being an athlete. You know, how many um, athletes actually get to be, get to the professional level? You know, the odds are, are incredibly small. A lot of people aspire to be professional athletes, but to get there, uh, you know, uh, the numbers are minuscule. It's very similar in the arts, whether it's music, uh, painting, drawing, um, acting, the actual amount of people who are trying versus the people who actually are successful, you know, the numbers are probably very similar. Um, and so when it comes to things like that, yeah, you know, if I can be an inspiration, great. And, and it's nice to, to hear it. Um, but when it comes to especially, you know, uh, folks of color, one of the things I'm hoping and part of the reason for doing this now is I want people, um, you know, black, brown, you know, uh, to know that there is opportunity off the field, you know. And so to see somebody like me, I've been successful, even though I didn't get to the professional level on the field, um, there are other opportunities off the field. So from that standpoint, that's the way I, I would kind of interpret, you know, that question is when you ask, you know, what does that feel like or how does it feel to inspire? Yeah, that's great. And instead of me inspiring with my play, hopefully I'm inspiring, you know, with the art. Now, was sports and art and combine the two, is it always something you wanted to do? I mean, I tell looking from behind you have all those athletes <laughs> on the wall in your studio there and you're clearly passionate about being in this space. Is it something that really happened as a result of the San Jose Sharks logo and then building off of that? Or did you always aspire to be in the sports space when it comes to applying your craft? Yeah, you know, I long before I did the sport, uh, Sharks logo, <clears throat> you know, I'd been painting and drawing athletes. Um, and I'd been in sports. <clears throat> the, uh, the way I ended up getting the Sharks um, project is I was asked to speak at a sports marketing seminar. So I had already been creating, um, you know, paintings and images and stuff that were um, a little bit game changing in terms of how people approach sports marketing. You know, the paintings and the images I was doing, you know, back probably in the early 80s uh, were very different. I was painting what I called sports fantasy. Well, what I did was I thought of the athletes as the way I think fans began to think about them, and that is as superheroes. So if I, a lot of times when I'm talking to people, I'll tell them, you know, you know, in the 50s, um, the icons in society were, you know, were probably the actors, you know. By the time you got to the 60s and 70s, the cultural icons were, were rock and roll. Right. It was the Beatles, you know, Elvis was coming in the 50s. And so you start to get into this whole thing. Well, by the 90s, 
the athletes were starting to become the cultural icons. <clears throat> and the way that people perceived them was, like I said, I, I saw them perceive them more as superheroes. They were doing these amazing feats that the average person could not do. So I started to relate them more to comic book heroes. And so when I started doing my paintings and this idea of sports fantasy, it was to portray them as superheroes. So if I went to buy, you know, an issue number one of Spider-Man, why couldn't I buy an issue number one of Michael Jordan, right? So that's how I started to treat it. And that's what I was doing with my art. And so at that sports marketing uh, convention that they had, that's what I was doing is they start to see these paintings. Um, I was painting in kind of this photo surreal style and, and they got the attention, but that's when the, you know, somebody in the audience, you know, saw it and said, Hey, would you do a sports logo? And that's how I ended up doing the sharks logo. Um, but it all kind of led to, you know, um, my way of thinking and perceiving athletes and sports it was just a different approach at that time. Well, did you use that same approach on speaking of heroes and icons? Uh, I want to talk about Willie O'Ree. Uh, Willie is a hero to myself. He's an icon to every black person of color that plays the game of hockey now before going, you know, going forward um, or going forward, excuse me. But you created this Willie O'Ree skate, which honored Willie breaking the National Hockey League in January 18th, 1958. You got a brown clinch fist on there. Uh, you have peace sign, respect, a lot of Willie's famous slogans that he likes to use. Uh, what went into the design of the skate and what led you to create the skate? Because I know it was a quick turnaround too. This happened like very quick. I know design takes months and even years sometimes, but you're able to turn this thing around pretty quickly with the help of Bauer uh, working with you to implement your ideas and make it come to life. Yeah, you know, it was interesting. Uh, uh, Eustace King, who, who I know you know, um, you know, had reached out to me. Um, and I was actually looking for a way to, uh, to have my art um, do, do more good, you know, um, raise more kind of awareness um, with everything that's going on and, you know, in our world today and in our society today. But what I wanted to do was get some more information. Um, so we talked to, there were some of the other hockey players that we talked to uh, that used to sit, set up the conversation between Bauer, um, some of the players, you know, Wayne Simmons, things like that. And, and so as we were, as I was listening to them um, and listening to the things that Eustace had said, you and I had spoken before. And so it was like, how do I represent on a skate um, kind of the, the attitude and it became more about a message and, and what came out of it was, you know, Willie's quote about all I needed was an opportunity. And so it kind of started there and then listening to the other players and listening to other people, it became, uh, important to me that the design not only honor Willie, but also have a message. And, I thought the best way to convey the message was through words. And that's why on the, on the outside of the skate, you'll see the kind of the portrait of Willie, you'll see his quote, but on the inside of the skate, um, I wanted to make sure the message was clear. So I just put the words on there, <laughs> respect. Um, you know, you see the word opportunity is, is emphasized, you, hear, you see the word equality. So it was about, this was, this was a message that needed to be delivered and it, I'm hoping that when people look at the skates, that yes, it's honoring Willie, but it's also there, there's almost that bigger message that I'm hoping is there. Um, that, you know, given where we are and, and, and the things that are happening, um, you know, people have to look at those words and hopefully uh, it will encourage conversation. So I think here's where I'm looking at being able to um, take what we started with Willie Skate, uh, take it league wide and allow the players, uh, give them a platform to be able to express their views, opinions, and more importantly, bring about a, a greater awareness to causes that they support. And I think that's a perfect way to do it. That's what makes your league interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what makes your players interesting. So if we look at it, if you think about it in the NBA, um, the players 
are known, their personalities are known, you, you know, you, you, they have their images, um, they're just visible. And when you think about the NFL with their helmets on, that's one thing. But even with their helmets off, they are legislated by the league to the point where they really can't express themselves. You know, after you score a touchdown, you know, remember, they, they had to fight to be able to celebrate. <laughs> you know, can you imagine, you know, guys in hockey, if they score a goal, the league comes in and says, OK, here's what you can and can't do after you celebrate a goal. You know, the, the idea of allowing athletes to kind of be themselves, express themselves, um, be able to have their say, I think is really important. And, and it should go into what they wear on the ice. Yeah, I guess if they started fining players for their goal celebration, I would have gotten fined big time back then. <laughs> Jumping in the glass when I was in Boston or the Superman dive after a playoff overtime winning goal. So I certainly hope that doesn't happen. I feel the league is relaxing a little bit now. And you talk about San Jose being one of those teams that really set the tone when it comes to being innovative, and they're still doing it now. Uh, we're going to see the Terry Smith Unite jerseys being worn when the Sharks play against the St. Louis Blues, and you know all the proceeds after it gets auctioned off is benefiting the Housing Industry uh, Foundation, a nonprofit out there. Uh, what's your take on those jerseys and the fact that they're still continuing to honor you and your legacy still continues to grow out there in the Bay Area? It's been nice over the last couple of years where, you know, the Sharks have reached back out to me and asked me to do a few things, um, you know, whether it's designing, you know, a, a third jersey or or something like this. Um, this was exciting to me because, again, as, as I said earlier, um, being able to use my artwork now at this stage of my career to have a positive effect on society, to make statements and messages. Um, uh, and, and to bring a, a attention and awareness to things. So that's why the, the, this kind of almost came right after the, uh, the, the Willie O'Ree Bauer uh, skate that we designed. And that was, you know, it felt, uh, it's hard to describe a little bit because as an artist, you kind of work all your life, you know, to, to get your work out there and have people see it and you hope they like it. Um, and over the last few years, it, it's been, more important for me, not that they like it, but that they pay attention to it and that there's a message. Mm -hmm. And so now I feel that I'm at this, at the stage where I can actually use my artwork, um, you know, uh, to bring about social change. Uh, but, but I, I'm thankful to the sharks. I'm also thankful to the league because I wrote them a letter, you know, uh, explaining what I was doing and why I was doing it. Um, and why I felt it was important that the art, go out there the way, you know, as I, uh, as I intended. Most of the designs are a, a takeoff on the Sharks logo. Um, so you still have the team's uh, logo as the centerpiece uh, and as the crest. Uh, what I did on these uniforms is I, you know, I put the, the team's logo on the shoulders, but I created a, a new crest <laughs> that, that had nothing to do with the team. Um, but had to do with the message. And, you know, my, in, in my letter to the league, because again, I think they would have preferred, you know, put the Sharks logo, your variation of the Sharks logo on the front and then whatever else on the shoulders. But to me, that's, that, that was the problem. And that's why I wanted to reverse that. Because the problem is that people, um, something will happen and then people will talk about it. It will be in the news or front page for a week, a month, and then it gets forgotten. Mm -hmm. You know, and so my whole point was, no, uh, the issues that are going on today, especially the racial issues, uh, need to be front and center, which means that's what needs to be on the front. The team can go on the shoulders. I didn't use teal because this wasn't about teal. The colors that I use are representing the different racial colors, the different skin tones as we think about it. And so the whole idea was no teal because it's not about teal. It's about all these other colors that we're not either talking about or that are being treated differently. Um, but, you know, and the message on there is simple. Unite. Most of the time you don't see words on crest, but the word unite is on there. The colors are on there. 
uh, on the shoulders, you know, there are, are, are words similar to what we had done uh, with, with the uh, Willie O'Ree skate about inclusion, about diversity. So the whole idea here was to put something front and center. And then kind of the, the, the topper, if you will, was there's a hockey player on there on the front, but it's a hockey player of color. Uh, and it is the idea is when you see it, it, it to, to most people, I think it's going to look a little different or a little odd. And that is because most people are not used to seeing a hockey player of color. And so, again, all of this stuff gets put front and center by putting that mark in the middle of, of, of the jersey. And that is the crest. And what I want to do, again, is get people talking. And that's the whole point of it is people have to talk. So what advice would you give an artist before I let you go here? If they wanted to be in the game of hockey or in sports in general and try to follow your path to creating logos, uh, marketing campaigns, uh, different kind of materials to highlight and market the game of hockey, what would you say to that high school student, that college student that wants to get involved in the game of hockey or sports? So the, the, the odds are tough. So the first thing I'd say is just know that the odds – are, are, are they're long and, and it's going to be hard but just like any athlete that makes it or any artist singer writer first of all there's passion you got to have passion about what you're doing and you really have to want to do it because the odds are going to be against you so that's number one uh, number two it, it's hard work it's all the stuff that you don't see you know, uh, you know, the, if, if you're, you know, if you're a hockey player, you know, how many slap shots are you taking? How, how much training are you doing? How hard are you running and working out and lifting weights? You're getting hit every night. You're coming home. Um, you know, you're sleeping on ice because you're beat up, you're bruised, and you go back out there the next day. It's hard work. So that'd be the second thing. Just know it's going to be hard work. Uh, perseverance. How many times are you going to be told no? How many times are you going to be told you can't make it? How many times are you going to be told you're not good enough? Um, so it's that persistence um, and perseverance. So if there's something that you really want, you have to go after it. And it's a lot of hard work. The other thing I'd say is be creative. As, as an artist, you are a creative person. So be just as creative about seeking out your opportunities. Um, it's not going to be handed to you. It's somebody's not going to come and, and say, hey, Terry, great, do this. No, there's all that work that goes in. Are you sending out letters? Are you sending your work out? If you're an athlete, you know, getting those tryouts, getting those walk-ons, you know, you're not drafted, but you still want to play, showing up and, and, and trying to play at camps and showing people what you can do. So, you know, from that standpoint, what I'm going to say is, you know, life is, is hard work and you got to put in the time. You got to put in the effort. Um, and, you know, if you do make it, and this is the last thing I'll say, if you do make it, it's really important that you reach back and open the door and help other people because it is about the opportunity. You know, I don't get where I am without the opportunity, you know, and my opportunities, you know, came in the way of, you know, playing basketball, but, you know, somebody had to give me a scholarship and then somebody else had to give me a chance to do this or that. People can open the door for you, but that's all they do. After they open the door, now the hard work starts. It's up to you. It's up to you to be successful. So, you know, that's kind of, you know, kind of it in a nutshell. Work hard. If you get an opportunity, make the most of it. And then if you're fortunate enough to get there, open the door for other people. I want to thank you very much for joining us in Hockey Culture. This is an amazing conversation. I'm an artist myself on TV. I like to act a little bit. I like to write. <laughs> thing sound great in the shower but learning more i learn more about you every single time we speak we could speak forever we could speak i mean it's, it's funny when i'm at home luckily that i could have us unlimited time to talk to you because we could go on and on and on and on and on um just talking about life in general and i definitely appreciate having our conversations uh when we do get a chance to connect so thank you for joining us i appreciate your work with everything that's happened to san jose sharks and it's about time they brought you out of the shadow <laughs> back out in the spotlight so people understand and know and they can appreciate what you brought to the game of hockey. 
Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for the time and, uh, you know, love to do it again. And yeah, you and I could talk forever. So if we do it again, we'll, we'll pick some other topic and we'll have a, we'll have a good time. So appreciate you having me on. Thanks.